Welcome along to part two of our q and I'm Paul from Photogenius and what was going to be one video has now been split into two halves because I've tried to answer every single question. So if you've checked out part one and your question was not answered, it's going to be answered right here in part two. Enjoy the video. The next question comes from our car brother, Adi Kari. Um, he's a beginner. Um, he's buying a camera, he's going for the Canon EOS 200D and the 50mm f1.8 Canon STM low, uh, lens and he's simply asking am I choosing right, uh, wants to do street photography and landscape photography. Well, um, firstly 200D Canon camera, great camera, great for video by the way, really good. 50mm uh, f1.8, nifty 50, uh, look, fantastic lens, great choice. Um, Street photography, maybe, and also landscape photography, maybe that lens is a little bit narrow. Um, I did a little bit of research, looked at what was available. I think for um, value for money, I would consider a different lens. Maybe go for the 24 millimeter f 2.8 lens. Um, it's still got a wide aperture like the 50, but it's just that little bit wider. Put it on the 200D body, and I think that would be a great lens that is gonna give you what you want for your street photography and your landscape photography. Creating time lapse on a Nikon D3400 was a popular subject. Both uh, Vivek Linguesh, uh, Yusuf Jabbar, both asked me about um, the Nikon D3400 and is it possible to create a time lapse? Um, no, sadly the Nikon D3400 does not offer a time lapse option. Um, I believe you can buy an external timer that you can plug into the camera and use that to trigger multiple shots and turn those into a time lapse. But I did some research and you cannot do a time lapse with the D3400, sadly. An option that you could do, which maybe won't give the same results, is to shoot a video in the Nikon D3400 and then using some software, slow it down. That's an option. Now, Abby um, Germa asks, um, I have a Nikon and hates it. Um, why is Canon so much better? And I don't mean it based on popularity, but strictly specs. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with you on this one. Firstly, sorry to hear that you don't like your Nikon camera. I'm not sure why you don't like it. You haven't specified anything. Um, Nikon versus Canon. There's this big thing between Nikon and Canon. They are the two uh, biggest camera manufacturers out there. Um, I own Canon cameras and Nikon cameras. And to be honest, there isn't very much between them. Um, I also own a Fujifilm camera and I see lots of different camera types on my workshops and courses here in Brisbane. And to be honest, they all do very similar things. So I'm not quite sure why you don't like your Nikon. Maybe you just haven't got your head around the features yet. I don't know. But to be honest, I don't necessarily think Think Canon are much better. Um, for me, I use Canon cameras mostly for videos. This video is being shot on a Canon 80D. When I'm doing still photography, I tend to then shoot with a Nikon camera. Um, but I can't help you any more than that. But sorry to hear you're not having fun with your Nikon camera. My next question comes from Daniel Martins, who has a Canon 50D. Um, with a kit lens, 18-55, and has a particular interest in architecture photography, um, considering upgrading to the Canon T7i, which here in Australia is the 800D, and is asking about whether or not um, to update just the lens or update the camera. Well, look, the 50D is a fairly older camera now. To be honest, there's been a 60D, 70, and an 80D since then. Uh, no doubt there'll be a 90D coming sometime soon. So I think a uh, upgrade of the camera will be a good idea. You're going to get much better resolution uh, from the 800D, um, more focus points, um, newer processor, the ability to shoot at higher ISOs. So lots of reasons I would think to you know, upgrade the camera, definitely. Um, with the camera, you would get the newest or latest 18 to 55 millimeter lens as well, which would be the STM version as well, which has got a nice quick motor. So to be honest, I would definitely consider looking at a camera upgrade. Um, in terms of lenses with architectural photography, generally you want a nice wide view. So further down the track, you might want to look at a wide lens. Uh, the 10 to 22 Canon lens is great. Uh, a little bit cheaper, the 10 to 20 Sigma lens would suit perfectly as well. I hope that helps. 
The next one comes from Brainard, who simply asks, um, five must-have lenses. <laughs> okay, now this is a really difficult one to answer. What are the five must-have lenses? Well, I'm gonna give you one. It's, the, it, it's a prime lens. The Nifty 50 um, is perfect if you've got a Canon camera. Uh, that's the 50 millimeter f 1.8. Um, same if you've got a Nikon, although you might want to also check out the 35 millimeter f 1.8 for the Nikons, which is another great lens. Look, look I'm not going to answer your question now, um, and I hope you don't mind, but here's why. I think this is a great question. I think this probably deserves a video all of its own. So sometime soon, I'm gonna do a video guide to some must have lenses. So Brainard, no answer directly right now, but keep watching. There's gonna be a video on this coming very soon. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Jagan Mahapatra asks about the Nikon D5600. I'm a beginner, is the Nikon D5600 okay for me? Short answer. Absolutely. It's not the entry level camera. It sits a bit higher up in the range. Um, the D3400 is the entry level and that's a great camera, but the 5600 has some extra features. Um, the Wi-Fi is a nice feature. The touch screen is great. Um, so yes, short answer, great camera. Derek Sampani asks about flip out screens. Uh, do I need a flip out screen for photography? Well, the short answer is no, of course you don't. Um, People have been taking photos for many, many years. And before digital cameras, we had film cameras and they didn't have fancy screens and we got by just fine. We used the viewfinder. When I'm taking pictures, I still use the viewfinder over the screen, but I do use the screen sometimes when I'm maybe on a tripod. Um, do we need a flip out screen? Uh, again, not necessarily, but I found that the flip out or articulated screen to use the correct term is actually pretty useful. If you wanna do videos, maybe not now, but further down the track, fantastic. But if you're doing still photography, having a flip out screen just gives you a bit more flexibility. For example, if you're shooting above a crowd of people, you can flip the screen out, hold the camera up at arm's length, and you can still take a picture. Or maybe you want a lower view, but you don't actually wanna be laying on the ground. Again, the flip out screen means that you can hold the camera down low, and you can still compose your image easily. So. Uh, no, it's not a must have, but it's quite useful if you're thinking about going for a camera with an articulated screen. RJ Kebab asks about the Canon 50mm f1.8 lens. Having bought the 800D and 50mm primes, he asks, did I make the right decision? As a beginner, uh, yes, a 50 millimeter lens is fantastic. It's a prime lens, no zoom, but great wide aperture, meaning you get lots of light down the lens and you can get that lovely blurry background, often referred to as bokka or bouquet, depending on where you're from. Um, yeah, I don't think you made a bad decision at all. The 50 millimeter lens is a lot of fun. I recommend everyone should, should own one, to be honest. Um, so yeah, the answer, yes. Great choice, well done. Enjoy your camera, have fun, get some great images. Now the next question is an interesting one from Aditya Verma who asks, how do I shoot photos like Brandon Wolfel? Now, if you don't know Brandon Wolfel's work, he's a New York based photographer who specializes in portrait photography and he has a very particular and very, um, I think, fantastic style. Um, he tends to shoot um, portrait photography um, with a very sort of pink and blue hues. He's got a great look, lots of nice soft blurry backgrounds. Um, amazing photography, you should check him out. Um, and look, I've got some tips for you. If you like the style, and I'll put some examples down below, um, time of day, Brandon shoots mostly at sundown when the light is low. He shoots with a Nikon camera and a prime lens. The prime lens gives uh, a nice soft blurry background known as a shallow depth of field because he shoots wide open. That means the aperture is wide open. So again, I've talked often in videos and in this video about the Nifty 50 and prime lenses. Those are the sorts of lenses that Brandon uses. Check out the 50 millimeter F 1.8 lens. I'll put some links down below. Um, he does a lot of editing in Lightroom as well to emphasize the colors. And from what I understand, he tends to shoot a little bit underexposed and then increase the brightness in post-processing. So there's a couple of little tips there on Brandon's style. Now what I'm gonna do is um, 
there was a video posted recently by Peter McKinnon. Now, if you don't know who Peter McKinnon is, he's an amazing YouTuber photographer and you should definitely consider following him. Now, he recently posted a video behind the scenes with Brandon Wolfel and it's a fantastic video. So if you want to see more on this style, check out the links below the video. Now, A. Riley King uh, says, hi there, new subscriber here. Well, thank you for subscribing. I just purchased a Nikon D3400. What lens would you recommend for vlogging, travel, photography, and video? Um, D3400 usually comes with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. So that's the perfect lens to get you started. But let's talk vlogging. And vlogging is when you're doing a video and talking to camera. So usually you're hand holding the camera, which means the distance between the face and the camera is not very great. To get a wider view, I would consider looking at a lens that is wide, like the 10 to 20 millimeter lens. Uh, look at the Sigma option, which is pretty affordable. Um, I think that would also suit for your travels as well and would be great for photography, but also video. So my advice, go wide. Next question comes from uh, Guyen, Hoi Guyen. Again, apologies if I got that really wrong. Uh, very simple, is an ND filter necessary when bracketing? Uh, an ND filter. Firstly, I'm gonna do a video all about ND filters very soon. These are neutral density filters, particularly popular with landscape photographers. And bracketing, I'm gonna do a video on this one too, because I've had lots of people asking me about this. Bracketing is when you are taking a picture of maybe a scene that is very high in contrast. So you've got bright areas and darker areas. And bracketing is where you take multiple exposures so as to try and ensure that one of those exposures gives you, um, you know, just generally a really nice looking photo that is well balanced. Uh, a lot of people also take um, three images or more when they're bracketing and then do HDR, which is a whole different subject. Again, maybe I'll do an HDR video sometime in the future. But to answer your question, when bracketing, you don't necessarily need an ND filter. Next question is from George DOS, who simply asks, is the Nikon D70 a good camera for portraits? Uh, yes, the Nikon D70 is an old camera. Um, it was my first digital SLR camera, and it's actually here, look, it still works. It's a fine camera. Okay, it's a bit dated now compared to the newer cameras, but it works just fine. And look, it's not always about the camera, it's more to do with the lens that you use. For portraits, consider using a longer lens for a more um, compressed perspective. That will give you a nice look and shape to the face. Uh, if you want a blurry background, I'm gonna have to say it again, the 50 millimeter prime lens, f1.8, is a great starter portrait lens. So not so much about the camera, the D70 is fine, but consider carefully your choice of lens, George, and thanks for asking. Isa Janisi says, hi, newbie here. What kind of lens and lighting is good for taking fitness, bodybuilding photos to highlight body shape and tone? Um, lens, look, I don't know. If, if you're looking to blur the background so the emphasis is on the actual person, then you might want to look at something like a prime lens. Uh, you don't mention what camera you've got, but maybe look at something like 35 millimeter f1.8. Um, that will soften the background and put the emphasis on the subject. Um, to highlight the body shape, you're gonna to have to think about your lighting. Again, I don't know much about where you're shooting, whether it's outdoors or indoors. Um, sometimes more stark light will highlight shape and form better than softer light. So you could move towards a window to get some natural daylight, or you might wanna look at flash. Now, um, not enough time to really go into details here about flash, but my advice is if you're gonna look at flash, maybe look at off camera flash. So you can take the, the flash off the camera and point, have the light coming from a particular angle so as to highlight any um, you know, body shape and tone. Um, not to be honest, a simple question to answer without knowing much about what you're doing, but I hope that helps a little bit. Now the final question comes from Wayne S who is asking about ND filters and bracketing. Uh, he's using a D3400 and asks very simply, can I do bracketing on the Nikon D3400? Well, yes, the Nikon D3400 does not offer 
auto bracketing like many cameras do but you can do bracketing by using the manual modes all you've got to do is manually adjust the exposure um, usually over or under by what is called one stop now Bracketing is a question that's come up a lot recently, so I am going to be putting a video out just on bracketing very, very soon, so look out for that one. Uh, Wayne also mentioned that he's using ND filters. Um, you don't necessarily need to use ND filters when you're bracketing, but ND filters, again, another topic that I'm going to be covering in a video very, very soon. So look out for that one, and Wayne, thanks for your question. So a big thank you to everybody that took the time to ask a question and I've tried my hardest to answer every single question that I got asked. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more Q&As in the future, give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed and leave your comments or suggestions down below. And don't forget to check out the links below the video for more information on some of the camera lenses and other things that we've talked about in this video. I hope to see you sometime soon. See ya.